so it is now Wednesday night. I have less than two days before I have to leave, and this is how much I've had packed. Oh, look! Oh, all the clothes that aren't packed. Oh, how nice! Oh, look at all the things that are not packed. You can see the suitcases that will be packed eventually, hopefully, but nothing is actually packed. So, within the next 43 hours, I have to get everything I can ever hope to need for a whole year into two suitcases. So, keep you updated on that one. All right, so quick update, finished packing. We are now on the way to the airport. Um, kind of freaking out a little bit because the flight number on my itinerary doesn't match the flight number that is on the airport's website. So stay tuned for how that's going to play out. Hopefully well. And I would like to give a special shout out to my mother who is driving me and was instrumental in packing and forcing me not to have a tantrum as I was packing. So let's see how this goes. Well, and I'll see. The row numbers are blue. It took me forever to figure oh, that out. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, I am missing something right now. I just had that. So Royal Jordanian got the memo on the color scheme for this trip because we now have the coral blanket and the coral pillow. It's a match for me. Coral book bag. All right. So um, about 12 hours later, I am here in Jordan. I think something that I've learned so far in just my 24 hours of traveling through this great adventure, one of the pieces of wisdom that I have for everybody is, your mother is always right. So the thing is, when I had my luggage, it I had such a I have such a long layover in Jordan that my luggage had to be picked up by me at baggage claim and then reboarded because I have a 13 hour layover here in Jordan. Um, and that requires going through customs and just all of this crap. So um, on the plane, they asked me if I was in transit and I said yes. And I filled out a little form that was blue. Apparently blue is the color of this is an American who is lost because as soon as I walked out off of the plane, I got passed around between about three to four different men in tuxes who were trying to help me figure it out. So finally I landed on one. He was like, we're going to get you a hotel because it's over eight hours and we're going to get you there and everything. So um waited for my baggage, which was <laughs> my two bags were two of the last that came out. So that was really awesome. Um, got on a shuttle and now I am here in a hotel. A hotel I did not plan on being in or paid for or anything like that. Um, they're gonna wake me up tomorrow because they have, saw my boarding pass and know when my flight is so they're gonna call me and get me a shuttle back to the front. I think I got comped a meal. I, I, I'm not sure. Dinner was served at some time. Um, Oh, cool, I got a stamp in my passport. I just saw that. First stamp in my passport, that's awesome. 
So, um, oh, so the mom's always right then. Um, before I left, I said, are there any last words you'd like to give me before I fly off to a different country halfway around the world? And she said, people will always adopt you. So that is my summary for that. And you know what's so ironic? As we were about to fly off the plane, I had, like, all those cool videos of, like, me telling the lady, like, where her row number was and my matching book bag to the to the linens and whatever um and I was about to tweet like oh I already have so many great stories and like I was sitting there thinking wow I I feel like that's gonna be it like it's gonna be a kind of uneventful flight but no here I am in a hotel where I will be eating and sleeping and showering so that obviously I need it so Cool, and I will let you guys know if I make it back to the airport. All right, so status update on the room. It had a door situation. Um, when I go outside, I have a cigarette because I can do that. Um, couldn't figure out how to close the door. So I finally figured out that like if you push in a thing and then seal it and then you can use your key. It was it was convoluted, and I figured there must be an easier way, but there really wasn't, and I couldn't figure it out. I would show you, but I don't I don't want to go near that door again. So, and I remember at the hotel they were like, "You have to stay at the hotel," and I was like, "Oh yeah, like I'm not gonna go like sightseeing tonight or anything. Like what? Like no, like I'm not gonna throw a party or anything in the free hotel that you're giving me. Um, maybe they meant you can't leave your room, but they said I could have dinner." which I don't know how I get access to dinner, but I brought some food anyway, so I'm not gonna, I'm not here for the free meal. So, um, figured out how to close the door for me with the outside, and I was like, well, I'll just see if I can get back in, just for shits and gigs. And I noticed that there was a camera in the hallway for security reasons, I'm guessing. Um, couldn't get the door back open, and a guy came up by me and said, like, a worker here, not just a guy, he said, do you need any help getting back in your room? And I was like, yeah. And he did it without a problem. And I was like, oh, so, like, if I want to go out and smoke, like, I can, right? And he was like, no, you can smoke in your room. So I'm about to have a lovely cigarette in my hotel room. Flashback to 1990. I looked at him and I was like, well, I'm from America and everyone hates smokers, so you have to go outside. And he's like, oh, no, you can just do it here. He's like, do you need an ashtray? I'm like, no, I can just use, like, the window. It's fine. Oh, do you guys want to see my view? It's lovely. Actually, it's not that bad. I really love it. And it's it's just, I wish I could see the sunset, but it was cool as we were driving from the hotel. That, that was amazing. Like, it, it looked like, you know, the Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark, where he's digging and the sun is so big and round and, oof, looks so cool. It looks like an orange. All right, so I'm about to have a cigarette in my hotel room because nobody hates smokers here. All right, let's do it. I wonder if I can figure, okay, the next saga will be figuring out the TV. <laughs> is this smoke detector, or is this a smoke detector? I don't know, because that's, I was thinking about that when I first got in here, like, you can smoke in Jordan hotels, like, why not? But then I, like, came in here and I looked at that, that's a smoke detector. But look how far away it is from the window. And you have to have smoke detectors in all rooms, right? You can't just... So it's going to be fine, especially since I have the window open. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah, so if I set off the smoke detector and have the sprinkle sister go off... Yeah. Where's the sprinkler? Oh, right there. Yeah, I'm going to be traumatized. Um, more so than I already am. All right, but that was just a quick, quick thought. But yeah, if he's offering an ashtray, then there's definitely allowed to be smoking. <sighs> Not gonna say it. The thing that every 22 year old says. So I'm not going to, and I'm gonna edit that part out because no one needs to know about that. Um. So here we go. Opening up the window. Can you tell I'm nervous about this? But I want to get right next to it. Can I move this table? Okay, so there's the table, there's the window. I want to stand, like, outside of the window, basically, because that's just the stigma that's come with it. So all those D-A-R-E programs and everything like that, that is really, 
really doing its number on me. I mean, not so much to the point where I'm going to stop smoking, but to the point where I am moving furniture, rearranging this, and will I move it back? Absolutely. Oh, and this is so unfair. I have down to three cigarettes left. Should have bought a pack before I left, but no. Um, oh my god. Well, if I really hate my life. God, me six. You do see that. Um. Watch, I'm gonna like. I'm, if I'm being set up, I swear to god. God, this place is so. Like. I'm I'm in this urban hotel area and I just love how deserty it is. Fucking love deserts. I'm sorry. Okay, rule number one of this video vlog. I'm gonna try not to say the F word every time I start even though I might be feeling it. Okay. I don't know why I'm taking a video of me smoking. All right, so after a lot of hectic traveling, I did make it here. This video is actually, this segment is actually being made on Thursday because I had a lot of trouble getting a universal charger, but that will be a whole other thing. But I just wanted to give you guys proof to show you that I am actually here because look at this. Yep, that's the freaking Mediterranean Sea.